The final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 578 in the name of Stuart Macmillan on Eye Health Week. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press their speak buttons now? Call on Stuart Macmillan to open the debate. Mr Macmillan, seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, presiding officer. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank all the members for signing the motion so we can actually have this members' debate. And also, I'd like to thank uh, and welcome the uh, members of RNAB Scotland uh, who are in the public gallery today. Uh, Signing officer, uh, last week we had a, a very, it was the first uh, cross party group meeting of this new session, and uh, it was certainly it was a very interesting uh, uh, cross party group meeting, and a whole host of issues were discussed uh, and debated, and certainly trying to kind of plan ahead, for not just for this year, but also. Uh, for the coming uh, parliamentary session. So certainly, I know there's a number of uh, members uh, in the chamber today who were at that cross-party group meeting, so I'm looking forward to listening to their contributions. Uh, I'm very pleased to open this debate and also to bring the issue of Eye Health Week uh, to the Parliament, uh, an issue which certainly has got more serious over the last Parliament and, and without any action, it will only get more serious over the course of this Parliament. Uh, this week is National Eye Health Week, an opportunity for us all to reflect on, on one of our senses which we actually sometimes may take for granted. And considering life without sight is almost unimaginable. Yet how many of us actually give our eyes the care and attention required to protect this valued sense? Every day in Scotland, 10 people lose their sight. This means that every day in eye clinics across Scotland, ophthalmologists have to tell patients that their sight has deteriorated to such an extent that it's not treatable and that consequently they are blind or partially sighted. The impact on the individual and also the family can be devastating. Questions about whether they can keep their job, about driving and getting about, socialising, uh, going, to, going to sport, uh, and seeing the, their wives, husbands, children and grandchildren. These are all things that race through your mind uh, and before the reality of living with sight loss actually sets in. Uh, there are challenges on the horizon for Scotland's eye health. Uh, our ageing population brings with it associated eye disease, the rise of diabetes, is driving up the number of Scots with diabetic retinopathy, which can cause blindness if it's not treated. And Scotland's welcoming growing diversity brings with it diverse eye health challenges. RNAB, the RNAB state that there are currently over 188,000 Scots living with significant sight loss at the moment, with the projection that this will actually more than double by 2020 to nearly 400,000 people. And given eye clinics are already the busiest part of outpatients in NHS, I don't have to get into any detail about the pressures that increased sight loss will actually bring if we don't uh, act even further. Uh, there are bright spots. Around 50% of sight loss is actually avoidable if it's detected early. Uh, there are new technologies through drug treatment and also NHS efficiency. But we do still need to do more. The personal cost to the individual who actually who, who don't need to lose a sight is actually incalculable and the cost to the public purse is all too predictable. Now, I am privileged to be the chair of the cross-party group on visual impairment in this parliament and I was chair in the last parliamentary session as well. And uh, I also uh, I know that, uh, that our cross-party group has been well run certainly for many, many years, even before I became its convener. But I think it's, also, it's important to actually realise that uh, and highlight that where, visual impairment, where the visual impairment sector actually comes together to have detailed, effective and vibrant discussion about the future of eye care and the provision of services for blind and partially sighted people, from newly born babies with sight loss, through school and work, uh, to retirement and also old age. Uh, supporting people with sight loss across generations, that's what our cross-party group actually manages to do. Despite uh, these uncertain times, and against the backdrop of uh, financial pressures, there are certainly some positive policy developments. Eye health has been on the government's agenda and radar for some time, and the sector uh, is coming together and speaking with one voice to a, to a degree that's actually not been seen before. And some of the key developments in recent years, including the Scottish Vision Strategy, the See Here Strategy, and the Getting It Right for Every Child approach, are certainly aspects that have certainly made a positive difference. The Scottish Vision Strategy is a cross-sector framework to improve provision for eye health and sight loss aim, uh, aims to ensure that everyone in Scotland knows how to look after their eyes, that treatment with an eye condition receives timely treatment, and if, if permanent sight loss occurs, there are early and appropriate services and support, and that Scotland is a society in which people with sight loss can fully participate. 
The See Here strategy was launched by the Scottish Government in 2014, and this strategy raises the profile of sensory impairments. And most notably, it called for consistency in how services are planned and commissioned across Scotland's 32 local authorities, each of which uh, had to set up local implementation groups. It also called for a move uh, towards joint sensory services for those experience, experiencing sight and or hearing loss. And then there's a getting it right for every child approach, enshrined in law by the Children and Young People of Scotland Act 2014. It states that all children, including those with a visual impairment, should be supported to address their well-being needs throughout their lives. The GERFEC principles were built upon the 2012 Doran Review, which examined learning provision for children with complex additional support needs, including visual impairment. In recent years, there has been a presumption that these children should be educated in mainstream schools, except under exceptional circumstances. And there are organisations who work tirelessly to fight for blind and partial sighted people, uh, prevent avoidable blindness, and to ensure the best outcomes for those with visual impairments. And I, I certainly would like to put it on record. My particular thanks uh, to the th third sector organisations such as Iron Abbey Scotland, Guide Dogs, the Royal Blind, and the many local societies from Sight Action in Inverness to Ness in the North East, uh, Vision PK in Perth and Kinross, and Visibility. Now, their work to bring to our attention the cause of blind and partially sighted people is second to none. And as a parliament, we are fortunate to have such persistent advocates. And while the Scottish Government has ensured investment in eye health and have retained provision for free eye health checks, and I know it's committed to tackling the rise in sight loss, we certainly can always do more. The presiding officer yesterday uh, I helped at the RNAB Scotland stand in Greenock's Oak Mall shopping centre. Uh, my thanks certainly go to the Oak Mall management for allowing the stall and also to RNAB Scotland for agreeing to come again to Greenock. We spoke to a large number of people locally and, and to raise the importance of actually getting the eyes tested regularly. The reception on the whole was good, uh, and many people informed us that, that they do get regular checkups, and this certainly was heartening to hear. But promoting free eye tests to wider society is absolutely vital, especially amongst vulnerable groups where awareness has been found to be lower. The Scottish Government public eye health campaigns have proved useful, and I look forward to actually seeing the results of the Community Optometry Service Review as we seek to improve eye health care across Scotland. Now, presenting officer, in promoting this motion, I, I certainly hope to bring greater focus and resulting action from our NHS and also the Scottish Government on sight loss to the benefit of us all. Thank you very much. Well uh, thank you very much, Ms McMillan. I have time in hand, so I can give every other speaker an extra minute. I know that's exciting. Uh, Stuart Stevenson, to be followed by Miles Briggs. Mr Stevenson, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. And let me start by congratulating uh, Stuart McMillan on bringing forward uh, his motion, which is allowing us uh, to debate this important uh, subject tonight. Um, sight is, of course, but one of our senses, and all add to life's richness. When we hear music, it moves us. When we taste food, it satisfies us. And when we see light, it inspires us. Each sensory perception is extraordinary, and each is an instrument of life. But senses are, of course, a great deal more than that. They're valuable uh, as functions of indicators of our general health. If protected, the resulting good health will necessarily yield encouraging social and economic benefits. Um, the primary issue tonight, of course, uh, is uh, a discussion around health. And our sensory uh, faculties directly affect and are affected by our health. Uh, much like our senses, uh, health is central to experience. Of all life's gifts, it bestows uh, the greatest benefit. Uh, wealth is a long way secondary uh, to health. We now, of course, live in a country that's ageing. I shall be 70 next month myself. Um, and so I suffer from five uh, sight defects. Myopia, hypermetropia, astigmatism, presbyopia, uh, and the one that can't be corrected by my spectacles, low light myopia, as the cells in my eye deteriorate. None of these are unusual. We will all, uh, to some degree, uh, experience these uh, as we get older. Uh, but of course, uh, looking into the eye, we can see more than simply optical defects uh, or the deterioration of the cells in the eye. Uh, we've seen uh, the rise in diabetes, which is uh, a sight-threatening uh, condition, um, creating vulnerability 
uh, in the eye health of this country is that uh, substantial increase in diabetes. So we need to deploy an effective uh, access uh, to treatment more than ever before. But the gateway to treatment, of course, is to have eye examinations. Uh, that's why the NHS uh, examinations are a necessary and very intelligent tool. And of course, they test much more now than when astigmatism was first diagnosed for me uh, in my 20s. Um, but the tool is of no value if people don't actually use it. Uh, we need to get more people uh, going for eye tests. We need to get more people aware of the option of eye tests. Some people don't go because they don't realize they can have a free eye test, uh, while others don't realize the wider health benefits that may accrue from detecting through an eye test that another condition uh, may exist. It can prevent, of course, the slow process of visual impairment, but show a window into systemic problems. So Eye Health Week is a huge opportunity for health in Scotland, um, and of course, an opportunity through debates like this and wider activity across Scotland uh, to create a new baseline for eye health, but through that, a baseline for overall health. Uh, it's an indicator of and preventer of health issues, a key element to our general uh, well-being. Now, we all kind of know the importance of our eyes. We rely on them, we take them for granted, uh, but not all of us look after them the way that we should do. If we have uh, early treatment of conditions that can be seen through the eye, there's a wider community economic benefit, but it will also make people uh, healthier and happier as well. Uh, limiting treatment cost and minimizing loss uh, is something that's delivered by preventative measures and being proactive. We want people to know about the availability of eye tests. We want people to benefit their personal health uh, by undertaking them. One in four people apparently don't know that eye exams are free in Scotland. Now, we've heard from uh, Stuart McMillan many of the organisations uh, that are working uh, on this subject, and I very much want to indicate my support, as I'm sure others will do likewise, uh, for the work that they've done. I previously was a deputy convener uh, of the cross-party uh, group on visual impairment, so I know uh, from previous experience of the important work that's done. There are social and economic benefits from good eyesight, from testing for eyesight, I hope that we'll continue, all of us, to press this important issue. Presiding Officer. Thank you very much. Uh, Miles Briggs, we're followed by Kenneth Gibson. Mr Briggs, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, I'd also like to congratulate Stuart McMillan on um, bringing forward this member's debate this evening and also pay tribute to the work um, which he is doing in Parliament on this. As one of the new members of the cross-party group, I also look forward to working with colleagues from across the chamber to help, to help, to help take forward this issue. Can I also apologise in advance that I'll be unable to stay for the full debate? Um, I welcome the opportunity to pay tribute to our eye health professionals across Scotland, especially our optometrists and ophthalmologists, for their excellent work and to commend the charities and associations working to support people with sight loss in our communities, including national organisations like RNIB Scotland, Optometry Scotland and Guide Dogs, as well as many other local groups across the Lothian region I represent. At a time when we are seeing growing demand on our health services, it's worth reflecting that eye health professionals play a big part in reducing the burden on general practitioners in secondary care. Stuart McMillan's motion is right to refer to the need to increase awareness of eye health and eye health checks through effective and focused public information campaigns. Take up rates of free eye health examinations amongst those on low incomes and amongst um, ethnic minorities across Scotland are too low and we need innovative ways of reaching these groups. As has already been mentioned, with type 2 diabetes more than six times more common in people of South Asian descent and three times more common amongst people of African and African Caribbean origin, we need to see new approaches to target these at-risk groups. It's clear that many groups which are failing to be reached and are responding, uh, are, who are not responding to traditional health advice and public 
uh, advertising campaigns need to be addressed. And I'd welcome a debate on this potentially in the future on how we address these issues. For example, considering the number of opticians available in deprived communities across Scotland, as well as developing potentially a mobile eye screening service um, for many highland and rural communities who maybe are also not going as regularly to have their eyes tested. Private and third sector initiatives also have an important role to play here. And I note that RNIB Scotland have established a good working, uh, working partnership with Specsavers, which is seeing them work together to encourage everyone to have eye checks at least every two years. Given that as much as 50% of sight loss is preventable, early diagnosis is clearly vital. And as we've already heard, eye health checkups can also help detect a range of other health conditions, including some that could be fatal if left untreated. Scotland enjoys some excellent quality eye health care, but there's still more to be done and much work to be carried out, given the number of Scots with visual impairment is also now projected to double to over 400,000 people between now and 2030 as our elderly population increases. Forward planning based on accurate, up-to-date information is critically important, and I share the concern of RNIB Scotland and others that the Scottish Government has not been publishing registration figures for blind and partially sighted people in Scotland in recent years, with the most recent figures available only relating to 2010. And I wonder in responding uh, to this debate this evening if the Minister will commit to resuming the publication of information provided by local authorities and updating the registration process to increase registration and provide additional categories of information so that we can have a truly national picture of sight loss that can best focus limited resources. To conclude, Deputy Presiding Officer, I really welcome tonight's debate and I look forward to further progress being made on building on much of the positive work which has already been undertaken to ensure both awareness of good eye health care and access to examinations and treatment, as well as working to make sure that we have the robust data we need that helps inform future planning and delivery of services. Thank you. I call Kenneth Gibson to be followed by Colin Smith. Mr Gibson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And firstly, can I thank and congratulate my colleague and constituency neighbour Stuart McMillan for bringing this important matter to the Chamber. Sight is undoubtedly the most developed of the human senses. It provides us with our most reliable perceptions and over half of all information received by the human brain is visual. The brain receives and interprets this information and produces the images we see. Sight is a fertile source for imagination and creativity, hence it is of the utmost importance that we take care of it throughout our lives. Eye Health Week serves as a reminder to Parliament and beyond of how crucial screenings and diagnostics are in the delivery of eye health care. Nearly two million people in the UK live with some sight loss and more than half of these incidents of sight loss are preventable or can be avoided. Sight loss is associated with significant health inequalities and its silent nature means symptoms often go unrecognised amongst people in vulnerable socio-economic groups and who are therefore more prone to it. It can be a matter of pride too. My grandmother was completely blind in one eye through having cataracts for seven years before letting on. And it was only when she kept turning her head um, 90 degrees that uh, her daughter realised there was something wrong with her eye. And bizarrely, my grandmother thought sight loss was a shameful thing. Mr. Well, indeed. I, I don't know who's... You're both standing together, Mr McMillan. Okay. Well, I thank uh, Kenneth Gibson for taking the intervention. Uh, uh, Mr Gibson knows uh, uh, someone in Greenock, uh, uh, John Crowder, who actually this morning underwent uh, an operation uh, to have a cataract removed, and I'm sure uh, Mr Gibson would like to wish uh, Mr Crowder uh, uh, a good recovery. I certainly would. It's very handy you're side by side, Mr Gibson. <laughs> yes, I certainly would, actually, uh, presiding officer. And indeed, uh, cataracts, I think, are important. And a cataract operation can actually transform people's lives. Uh, and I think that's uh, an important intervention that Stuart's just made. Now, as we've already heard, ethnicity can be a factor in some eye conditions. For example, Europeans are more susceptible to age-related macular degeneration, whereas South Asian and African Caribbean ethnic groups are at greater risk of developing diabetes. And of course, sight loss is one of the most common complications of diabetes. In Scotland, diabetes affects more than 1 in 25 people, over 228,000 folk. That's 228,000 people who are potentially exposed to sight loss and not 
disorders. To detect diabetic retinopathy, only an eye check will ascertain potential sight loss, leading, in the worst cases, to blindness. Presiding officer, I'd like to pick up a point that Sue McMillan made in his motion that there is an obvious link between eye health and wider public health issues. Diabetes is a case in point, but it is also true that cardiovascular disease and high blood pressure are likely to have a significant effect on eye health too. Infectious diseases such as shingles of the eye affect up to a quarter of all cases and can have a devastating impact on eye health. So what is at stake with regular eye checkups is not only to detect potential eye trouble, but any other potential diseases or infections. Free eye health checks for all implemented by the SNP Government are likely to be instrumental in preventing avoidable loss of sight and improving the cost efficiency of eye care services and, more generally, health care services. Not having universal free eye tests would be a penny-wise, pound-foolish measure, and I am pleased that in Scotland we will not go down this road, unlike south of the border. In my constituency of Cunningham North, a 10-year sensory plan was launched in 2014 in order to improve the lives of people suffering sensory difficulties by finding a new approach to sensory service provision across NHS Ayrshire and Arran. Sight loss is one of the key elements of this plan, and I am pleased to see the innovations and improvements which have been made since 2014. Today, there are an increased number of practices across mainland Ayrshire and in Cumbria. 60 optometry practices providing services and seven of them providing care in people's homes. I'm also pleased to note that eye health is evolving with new practices, such as, for example, the digital referral uh, that are now, is now being used in Ayrshire and in Cumbria, which is an innovative development in the eye care sector. This makes it easier to deliver patient care and improves the quality of the service. The use and applicability of this information should be further explored in improving research and developing preventative approaches. It's interesting to see how eye health care can be successfully coordinated nationally and locally, and our government must continue to work in that direction. Presiding officer, eye health week gives us the opportunity to inform ourselves about ophthalmology issues through diverse events within Scotland and take advantage of a free sight test, which I encourage people to have if they have not done so recently. I would like to warmly thank all the organisations involved in eye health week and hope that this week will be greatly successful in achieving its aims. Thank you. Thank you. I call Colin Smith to be followed by Donald Cameron. Mr Smith. President Officer, thank you for allowing the time for this debate uh, and thanks to Stuart McMillan for tabling the motion. Can I also congratulate him on being re-elected convener of the cross-party group for visual impairment. Uh, as a new member, I very much look forward to working with all members of the group. It's 10 years since the introduction of free eye health checks in Scotland by my colleague Lewis MacDonald as a responsible minister at the time. The move saw a real step change in the eye health care pathway in Scotland, and since then the number of eye examinations has increased by 29%. Optometry Scotland report that last year alone a total of 2.2 million eye examinations were provided by com community optometrists in Scotland, with less than 7% being referred to GPs and hospitals. This included over a million eye dishonor disorders managed by Scottish optometrists, including an estimated 200,000 eye emergencies. But we can't be complacent. That's why I very much welcome the current review into community optometry services. We need to maximise the frontline role optometrists play in detecting and treating eye conditions, not only to ensure we make the best use of their undoubted expertise, but to ease the pressures on our GPs and secondary health services. Over the next 20 years, sight loss is due to more than double from 188,000 to near 400,000. Eye patients now account for around 18% of all outpatient appointments. The ageing population, the increase in the ethnic minority population, Scotland's health challenges such as diabetes and more treatments becoming available shows the need to support frontline ophthalmic care is more important than ever before. It is also clear to see that we need to develop a strategy to engage hard to reach groups such as those living in deprived communities to ensure that everyone benefits from a free eye health examination. I would therefore ask the Minister if there are any plans to run a public health campaign highlighting eye health and the uptake of free eye health checks. In the meantime, this week, Eye Health Week provides us all with an opportunity to play our part in raising awareness of free eye health checks, but also to act ourselves. We should all be taking advantage of our free eye health check. 
It's not just your distance vision that is tested, but your eye pressure, peripheral vision, and retinas making it possible to flag up a whole host of other conditions, such as diabetes, glaucoma, and particularly important for some members in this chamber, high blood pressure. I'm sure that the chamber will be delighted to know and that, that, that thanks to RNIB Scotland, Optometry Scotland and Boots Opticians, I had these checks just yesterday when I carried out a visit to Boots Opticians in Dumfries and as you can see, I'm in perfect health. Now these free eye health checks are a tremendous asset for us all and we must encourage everyone to use them. Successive Scottish governments have recognised the importance of investing in eye, eye health checks in Scotland and another building block is the investment in the digital referral scheme, linking up high street optometrists to hospital eye clinics. Now, I appreciate the difficulties of, of complex IT projects and the, the practical application of technology, but I hope that the Minister can update the Chamber on progress today. Presider Officer, I would also like to touch on the opportunity that we have through health and social care integration. It is important that each integrated joint board works to develop a specific eye health plan, and I would again ask the Minister to give assurances that this will happen. Presiding Officer, finally, like Miles Briggs, I, I want to put on record my recognition of the tremendous work undertaken by professionals in the sector, uh, of which I met a number yesterday, nurses, optometrists, ophthalmologists, who all make a tremendous contribution to dealing with the increase of sight loss in the population. And like Stuart McMillan, I would also like to thank the third sector, who works so hard to promote the interests of people with sight loss. They run vital services and they also work closely with government, from the RNIB Scotland, Guide Dogs, UK Scotland, the Royal Blind, to local societies such as Visibility, who run services in my own constituency in Dumfries. To finish with, I would urge all colleagues to ensure they have their eyes tested and that they support the work of so many across Scotland to ensure eye health is on the radar of our health and social care priorities. I'd finish by very much commending the motion. Mm -hmm. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you very much. I call Donald Cameron to be followed by Sandra White for the last speaker in the open debate. Mr Cameron, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to thank Stuart McMillan for bringing this issue to the attention of Parliament again, given the importance that should be placed on maintaining good eye health. And I put on record my support for this campaign. We are now on day two of Eye Health Week and the campaign organised by Vision Matters, focusing on promoting children's eye health. As Vision Matters notes, some of the biggest contributors to poor eye health in later life include not attending an eye test at least once a year, poor diet, lack of exercise, overconsumption of alcohol, smoking, and not protecting our eyes from the sun. This is basic information, and it is vital that our children are made aware of it from a young age, not only to protect their vision, but to avoid a series of other health complications in later life. Taking children for regular eye tests and promoting a healthy and active lifestyle go hand in hand. As Stuart Macmillan and others have noticed, according to RNIB, have noted, according to RNIB, over 180,000 people living in Scotland have a form of sight loss. Importantly, over 90,000 of these cases of sight loss could have been prevented by people having a regular eye test. However, ensuring that everyone across Scotland has easy and reliable access to community ophthalmic services is vital. In my own Highlands and Islands region, this, is, this can be particularly challenging, given the sparsity of the population, which is, of course, spread over a large geographic area. According to the RNIB, the average waiting time for patients to receive inpatient or day case ophthalmic treatment is 52 days. But in the Highlands and Islands, however, it takes 62 days on average, which is significantly higher. This is unacceptable, and more needs to be done to ensure that there are sufficient community-based ophthalmic and optometry options for patients across the Highlands and Islands, and indeed in other remote and rural areas. With cases of sight loss estimated to more than double to 400,000 by 2030, charities including the RNIB have made clear calls for a new and coherent strategy to improve eye health across Scotland. The government's own Scottish Vision Strategy paper stated that the clear aim was to eliminate avoidable sight loss by 2020. However, with cataract surgeries up by 80% since 2000 and conditions such as diabetic retino retinopathy and age-related macular degeneration expected to become more prevalent, action is required sooner rather than later. And when the Health Committee recently visited the Golden Jubilee Hospital, I, for one, was astonished 
to learn about the sheer number of cataract operations that are undertaken there and what a large proportion of operations they take up. Site charities agree that a large part of tackling this is through publicising the fact that eye tests in Scotland are free. And a recent YouGov survey stated that only one in four Scots, sorry, a recent YouGov survey stated that one in four Scots still aren't aware of that. Given this has been the case for a decade, as others have noticed, clearly more needs to be done to promote this. Deputy Presiding Officer, it is clear that we face major challenges with eye health care, and I applaud Vision Matters for their campaign to raise awareness of this issue so that we in Parliament can work to find and implement the right solutions to help us to meet the vision strategy target of eliminating avoidable sight loss by 2030 and ensuring that people have greater access to eye health care facilities at a community level wherever they live. And I commend Stuart McMillan for his motion. Thank you. I call Sandra White to be followed by the Minister to close the Government. Thank you very much, President Officer, and can I congratulate my colleague Stuart McMillan for securing this debate, uh, such a, an important matter. I think it's been a very good debate, and the, you know, basically the contributions, it's not just about your eyes, as already been mentioned by another colleague, that basically they can tell so much about your health from an eye test also. Uh, and as someone who has just recently had to admit to the fact that I do need glasses now and again to, to read, uh, I know just how important, although I forgot them today, I know just how important it is uh, to have your eyes tested absolutely regularly. Uh, and that's why I wanted to congratulate Glasgow Caledonian University's Vision Centre uh, in, in my constituency uh, and welcome the work which uh, well, obviously the GCU, but in Glasgow we call it Glasgow Cali. So if I, I revert to Glasgow Cali rather than the full title, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Uh, the work they do there is absolutely fantastic, uh, raising the awareness of importance of eye health in the constituents in Glasgow and basically beyond, uh, training over 300 students each year in vision-related professions. And it is the only university in the UK to train, and I have to get my tongue around this one, optometrists, I hope that's the correct word, and dispensing opticians. Uh, and that's, you know, absolutely no mean feat to be the only university that trains in the whole of the UK. I also welcome its unique vision uh, sciences research expertise and I understand that members of the public who visit uh, the GCU Vision Centre are examined by students under the direct supervision uh, of experienced and qualified clinical staff. And they provide over 5,000 patient consultations each year. Uh, and the work of the qualified optometry students at the Hunter Street Centre, the health centre in Glasgow, who deliver eye care for homeless people and asylum seekers. And that's something I did want to touch on, because others have also, and Miles Brigg also mentioned the fact that trying to reach out to the hard to reach people in the community. You now people who are homeless and obviously asylum seekers are not always aware of the fact that they can go and get their eyes tested. So I think a special mention for uh, Glasgow Caledonian University's Vision Centre in regards to reaching out and uh, making people aware and giving uh, the free eye care for homeless people and asylum seekers is something that we should be looking at. And uh, picking up on, I think it was Miles Briggs that said it as well, we should perhaps have a special debate on the hard to reach people or highlight these particular groups uh, of people uh, who basically, as an example of people we do need to reach desperately as, as well. And I just wonder if the minister was looking at putting forward a project to capture these hard to reach people, homeless asylum seekers and others as well. Um, would she perhaps look at uh, what's happening in Glasgow Caledonia University Vision Centre and the service they provide and perhaps taking that on board for any future projects which the Scottish Government may want to do. And once again, I want to congratulate Stuart McMillan on a very, very good debate and a very, very worthwhile um, motion and something we should all be actually taking out there and telling our constituents about. Thank you very much, President Officer. Thank you. I think optometrist is easier to pronounce than ophthalmologist, but you did well with both. Uh, Minister, uh, if you close for the government, please. I concur with that point about the pronunciation of some of the uh, professions, so uh, hopefully I'll not uh, get too tongue-tied. Um, 
I want to add my thanks also to Stuart McMillan for giving us the opportunity to mark Eye Health Week and discuss eye care in Scotland. And echo my thanks to all the country's eye health professionals as set out in Stuart McMillan's motion and also want to welcome RNIB to the gallery this, this evening. And I'm sure most people in the chamber would agree that general ophthalmic uh, services is one of the true NHS success stories in Scotland. The introduction in 2006 of free eye examinations set Scotland apart from the rest of the UK. For the first time, everyone in Scotland, regardless of their personal situation, had access to an eye examination, examination free of charge. And that take has risen steadily to a position in 2015-16 where over 2 million people had their eyes examined, the highest number ever. But uh, we absolutely recognise that more needs to be done in terms of reaching out to the whole of society. And those are points that have been well made by Kenny Gibson, Colin Smith, Donald Cameron and uh, Sandra White. But clearly people recognise the benefits of having their eyes examined regularly and we need to ensure that that continues. And helping us to look after that crucial sense that, as Stuart McMillan and Stuart Stevenson and Kenny Gibson have pointed out, that we often sometimes can take for granted. And also the associated consequences that can happen if our sight deteriorates. And we are committed to ensuring that the best community eye care is accessible to everyone, providing a full health check of the patient's eye, including specific procedures depending on the patient's age or condition. And that's why on the 25th of August this year, the Cabinet Secretary for Health and Sport announced a review of community eye care uh, services. And I'm glad to have that review welcomed uh, by Colin Smith and also pleased to hear that he's in tip-top health condition as well as he set out in his remarks. But also to reassure him and Donald Cameron uh, that we will consider uh, raising awareness of eye tests as part of that review uh, as well and also take on board the points raised by Sandra White about the good practice that is ongoing at Glasgow Caledonian uh, University uh, as well. Before I discuss the review uh, further, I wanted to take the opportunity though to mention the current eye care services provided in the community and talk about the position of strength that we are in in Scotland. The optometrist in Scotland is the first port of call for any eye problem. Evidence shows that more patients now know to go directly to their optometrist if they have any problems with their eyes rather than to go to their GP. Community optometrists are now taking on this extended role, demonstrating the growing capacity, capability and competency of the profession. Optometrists are now doing more work in the community, reducing the burden on secondary care and ensuring patients remain in a primary care setting. A key enabler has been the decision in 2013 to allow optometrists to undergo training to independently prescribe medicines. And since then, the number has increased steadily and there are now over 120 optometrists who have become fully trained independent prescribers and, and another 30 in the hospitals. That's totaling one third of all independent prescribing optometrists in the UK and I believe we should continue to grow that number. I'd also like to take the opportunity to thank each and every optometrist who has taken the time to carry out this training and would encourage others to take up this opportunity. And an excellent example of how prescribing can be used to improve patient experience can be seen in the Lanarkshire Eye Network Scheme or LENS, which was set up in 2010. And this scheme was set up to reduce the burden on secondary care, allowing optometrists to prescribe medication for certain eye conditions. This move was welcomed by both optometrists and ophthalmologists and improved patient experience as patients did not have to travel to hospital when it was not necessary. And it has been a huge success. It has made optometrists feel more empowered by allowing them to make decisions on how to treat patients. It has reduced the burden on secondary care, freeing up the hospital eye service to treat those that need it most. And it has seen optometrists and ophthalmologists working together to improve patient care, which I think we can all agree is one of the utmost importance. And it has high patient satisfaction. They don't have to travel as far nor sign into waiting lists to receive treatment, particularly important in the treatment of eye diseases. And this is good news and entirely consistent with the Scottish Government's 2020 vision for health and social care to treat more patients in their local community. And as I'm sure we'd all agree, the possibility of losing your sight is, uh, is, to is so worrying. And it's important that any potential loss of sight is identified early. 
And one of the major causes of sight loss is glaucoma. And that's of particular interest to me because it's a condition that my mum suffers from and has a hereditary element to it. And this can affect a person's sight due to the build of pressure within their eyes. Early diagnosis is important and community optometrists are in the ideal place of recognising that condition early. And that's why earlier this year, as part of the Primary Care Transformation Fund, the government provided every optometry practice in Scotland with a pachymeter. And these handheld instruments measure the thickness of a patient's cornea by being placed directly on the surface of the patient's eye. And this helps identify if a patient is suffering from glaucoma and I'm told is absolutely painless. Now, optometrists and op ophthalmologists are also working together when patients need referral to secondary care. Eye care integration is a programme that is underway which allows optometrists to send patient referrals to secondary care electronically, a point made in a local sense by Kenny Gibson. Previously, if an optometrist decided to refer a patient to hospital, they had to send the forms by post, which takes time, and the optometrist rarely knew if the referral had been received. Now, optometrists can not only send the referral electronically, but can also attach pictures and scans of the patient's eyes. And this allows the ophthalmologist to assess and triage the referral with an appropriate appointment being offered sooner if that's required. And in time, we hope this will mean that there can be meaningful feedback to optometrists, hopefully reducing the number of unnecessary referrals to secondary care. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Scottish Government announced a review of community eye care in August of this year. And the aim of that review is to look at the current good practice being carried out across Scotland and look to see whether more can be done to ensure people from all backgrounds can take advantage of free eye care examinations. RNIB and Optometry Scotland representatives are both members of the review group with patients also involved to ensure how we capture their views. And the review will work alongside other Scottish government initiatives such as the See Here strategy, which focuses on sensory impairment in children and adults. And the review will report to ministers by the end of the year and I look forward to seeing what recommendations are presented. But also I wanted to highlight the other issues that were raised by members, such as Stuart McMillan's concerns about ensuring that uh, other key pillars of government policy, such as GERFEC, are part of that broader review. And I think that's a point that's well made. Again, similarly, Colin Smith's points about the changed landscape of social care and health integration is also a point well made, which will be uh, the review will take cognizance of. Stuart Stevenson also outlined the challenges facing eye services due to our ageing population. Again, the review will be able to unpick some of those challenges that we face. And in response to blind registration reviews raised by Miles Briggs, there is a review currently being carried out by the government to gather information from professionals, including examples of good practice. And finally, Stuart Stevenson and Kenny Gibson also linked the condition of our eyes as a useful barometer of our health and well-being. So we'll be mindful to take all of the points and uh, uh, issues that were raised this evening into that review uh, that we have uh, set out by the Cabinet Secretary. Um, so to conclude, Presiding Officer, I've been pleased to be involved in this debate. I'm sure this chamber will continue to support Eye Health Week in the years to come. <laughs> But the fact that we're taking forward the review, the fact there has been such a great interest in the work that's uh, been undertaken means that we can promise to continue to work with colleagues to ensure that we can create a, a service across the country which is fit for purpose for the needs of our population. So thank you. Thank you. That concludes the debate. I now close this meeting of Parliament.